Hello world! In this tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to use the HoloLens and Vuforia for image tracking. By the end of the tutorial, you'll be able to track images in the real world and display whatever you want on top of them. In this example here, we're showing what you'll have by the end of the tutorial, which is a floating 8-ball that will rotate, but you can really configure this however you want. Once you've detected the image using Vuforia and HoloLens, the world is your oyster, and that's the wonder of augmented reality. So, let's dive right in. To begin, let's make sure that you have all of the tools that you'll need to build this application from scratch. For starters, you want to make sure that you have your computer configured to support the HoloLens. To do this, you can simply go to the Install the Tools webpage of the Windows Dev Center for HoloLens and check out the step-by-step -step walkthrough on all of the tools you need for HoloLens. You can also check out one of our previous videos that was called Building AR for HoloLens. Once you do that, you'll also want to make sure that you go to Vuforia and register as a developer. Um, you can do that in the top right corner. And once you've registered, go ahead and log in. What you'll want to do next is go to the Develop tab, hit License Manager, and add a license key. When we're using Vuforia, every application that we have needs its own license key, so we're going to create one for this image recognition application. So hit Add License Key, select Development, because we're not going to release this to consumers, and to give it a name. I'll call it HoloLens Image Recognition, but you could pick whatever you want. Then hit next, and there we have it. Our key is almost completely ready. We just need to confirm uh, that we acknowledge all of these terms and conditions, which basically say that we have a limit on usage and different factors like that, but for development, this is totally fine. So let's go ahead and hit confirm, and now we have our license key. When we click through, we can see what the license key to use in our Unity app is, which we're going to configure right up next. So make sure that you have HoloLens all set, and that you're also set on Vuforia with a developer registration, and also a license key to use in Unity. Then we'll jump into building the application. Now let's dive into creating our application in Unity. One of the first steps that we're going to do is to configure our build settings. Uh, if you want a step-by-step -step overview of this, you can go to the Unity Development Overview in the Windows Dev Center and go to the section about configuring a new Unity project for mixed reality. I'm going to show you this on the fly, though. So in your Unity project, uh, here's a project that I've started from scratch. Uh, for starters, we want to go to Build Settings and make sure that our platform is Windows Store. For SDK, we should use Universal 10. Target device should be HoloLens. UWP build type should be D3D. Then, in our player settings, we want to make sure that certain capabilities are enabled so that we can access all of the HoloLens APIs. That's the Internet Client, Pictures Library, Videos Library, Webcam, Microphone, and Spatial Perception. Again, all of that is listed here if you scroll through, and we actually won't be using all of those capabilities. I'm just checking them on to show you how you can get full access to the HoloLens API set. So let's go back to Unity. We also need to configure our quality settings. So go to Project Settings, Quality, and we want to be using Fastest on the Windows Store. The way that you change that is you can hit this drop down over here and select Fastest. So now everything is configured for us to build this project, the HoloLens, but we still need to configure our cameras and get everything set up with Vuforia. For that, we need to go to the download samples uh, of the Vuforia developer portal. So if you just go to the download sections and hit samples, we can get some things that Vuforia has built for us to use out of the box in Unity to make our development easier. Go ahead and hit this download for Unity and unzip the contents of the, the folder that you download. Then, once you're done with that, you need to import that custom package. So I have already downloaded everything and unzipped it uh, so that you guys don't have to wait to watch me do that. Uh, the package that we want to import is this HoloLens Unity package. So let's go ahead and let that import. And while that's happening, uh, the last page that I want to show for this section is this Developing Vuforia Apps for HoloLens page. This just has a lot of good information 
on all of the details that you need to follow to get Unity configured for HoloLens and Vuforia. The key part for us is building the HoloLens scene camera. Essentially, we need to use the Vuforia AR camera prefab and also a HoloLens scene camera that we're going to configure in our scenes, and this is going to give us all the steps that we need for that. So it looks like everything is almost done importing here. So now I have the assets in my project, and as you can see, there really are a lot of things in this package, as I mentioned. So what we're going to be using today is inside of this Vuforia folder, there's the prefabs folder, we're going to be using the AR camera and the image recognition prefab mostly. But first, we need to configure this scene that we've created. So let's go to our default main camera and make this compatible with HoloLens. So we'll call it HoloLens camera. We want to change the clear flags to solid, the background color to completely black. And then for the near clipping plane, HoloLens suggests 0.85. Really, you could pick whatever number you want here, but it's good to stick with their defaults. So that's everything we need for the HoloLens camera. Now we need to configure our AR camera. So I'm going to save this as Holo Euphoria scene. Let's drag in our AR camera. And there's some configuration that we need to do on this camera. Uh, you'll see that it has this Euphoria behavior script attached to it. And that's where we configure everything that we'll need to change. Uh, for starters, we put our HoloLens camera as the central anchor point but we also need to change some stuff in the configuration. Uh, so if we go up here, one of the things that we need to do is add our app license key. So we created that before. I have mine at the ready right here. I'm just going to copy and paste this over. And then the steps on this developing Vuforia apps page uh, tells us everything else that we need to do. So our eyewear type needs to be optical see-through and the see-through config needs to be HoloLens. We've already done the central anchor point component part. So let's change the eyewear type to optical see-through, see-through config, HoloLens. If those aren't configured for you already, make sure that they are. Uh, but the reason why it looks like they are already configured is because we downloaded this specifically for HoloLens. If you were to get a different Vuforia package, those probably would not be auto-configured for you. So that's everything that we need to actually get this AR camera working so that we can access all of the Vuforia APIs, but also the HoloLens camera setup so that we can build the HoloLens. In the next section, we're going to dive into setting up image recognition. And we're almost done, so let's get right to it. All right, let's jump into getting image recognition working. But before we do that, I just want to clarify that there's one more bit of setup we need to do. In your build settings and in player settings, go into other settings, <laughs> lots of settings, and make sure that virtual reality is supported and that Windows Holographic is a VR SDK that you're using. Uh, if you want more detail on this, again, you can go through those pages that I showed earlier or jump into our last tutorial on developing with the HoloLens, and that will walk you through everything you need for that. So make sure that that's on so that we can actually deploy to the HoloLens, and let's start creating our image recognition app. So let's go to the Vuforia folder, and inside of the prefabs folder are a bunch of different target prefabs we can use with Vuforia. We're just going to use an image target for this tutorial, so that when we see an image uh, with the HoloLens on, we can display a model or really do whatever we want. So let's drag this into our scene. And the most important script on this is this image target behavior. Right off the bat, we need to enable extended tracking. At a high level, this enables the Vuforia um, tools to work with the HoloLens. And if we don't have it checked, um, Vuforia will still track images, but it won't be able to display whatever we want or work correctly with the HoloLens. You can read more about this online if you're interested. The next thing we need to do is configure an image database. And we do that on the Vuforia um, developer site. So let's go to develop. And when we go to target manager, we see that there's the option to add a database. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'll just call this sample DB. 
and we need to just select what type of database this is going to be. I'm going to select device because it's free and what this means is that we're actually going to store this database in our build. Um, you could select something like cloud or viewmark and what these let you do is they actually make it so that you can just um, kind of ping the database online rather than having to deploy it to your device. But again, device is free, it's easy to use, so we're just going to use that for storing our image recognition. So let's go into sample DB, and now we can add targets that we want to recognize. So we're just going to do an image, and we already have an image pre-configured. Uh, you might need to do some editing on the image that you use. Uh, you want to make sure that the image is very distinct and has distinct features so that it can be easily recognized by Vuforia. And you also might need to change the bit depth or other properties of the image. If you do need to do image editing, we recommend using GIMP. We used that and it worked for everything that we needed. Next up, uh, what we need to do is enter the width of our target in scene units. So Vuforia and Unity both work in meters and I'm going to be using um, this as our image target. Um, so this is probably about 0.25-ish meters. So that's what I'll enter there. And you can enter whatever you name, whatever name you want for your target. So once you've done that, hit Add, and next up, we download the database. Be sure to select Unity Editor since we're using Unity. And this is the part where we actually deploy this database in the form of a Unity package into our Unity project. So let's go back here, go to Assets, Import Package, and Custom Package. Then we need to find wherever that thing was, so I called it Sample DB. Here it is, it has the database name .unity package. And let's open that up, we can import it. So it looks like everything is added. And now what we want to do is make this image target use that database. So once I hit database, you'll see that sample DB pops up and it already knows that the image target is pool YT. Um, that's the image that I chose to use on the Vuforia developer site. So there's still a little bit more configuration we need to do. First of all, there's a bug um, that happens when we're importing these images, and we need to fix it so that the image actually displays on this object. So let's go to Editor, QCAR, Image Targets, inside of Sample DB. Here is our imported image, but we need to change the texture type and texture shape. So the type should be default, and the shape should be 2D. Once we do that, we apply, and now you can see that my image is appearing on this image target. So everything is set up there. We also need to configure our AR camera um, that Vuforia gave us out of the box to recognize and work with this database. The way we do that is we go to the camera and we hit Open Vuforia Configuration, and we can scroll down to Data Sets. Now, I have a few different data sets in here that I've used for testing, um, but I'm going to check them all off, and I'm only going to use the sample DB database that I just added in, and we also need to activate it. At a high level, what's going on here is we can have multiple databases on our build, and we can activate databases at different times depending on what we want to recognize. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to stick to this image, but this is a way that at runtime you could start switching around what you want to be detecting with Vuforia and the HoloLens. So that is just about everything. Uh, the next thing that we need to do to make sure that we actually get something meaningful is put something on this image target. And for that, I decided that I wanted to put a billiard ball on it, especially since the image is an homage to one of our past tutorials on playing pool. Okay, so now I'm back and I have the billiard balls downloaded. I'm going to go into prefabs. And the goal, again, is to configure one of these objects onto this image target. So I'm going to make it a child. This makes it so that when this image target is detected, all of its children get displayed and activated in the scene. So there you can see the billiard ball, and I need to position it relative to how I want it to appear when this target is detected. So first of all, I need to scale this thing down a good amount. I'm also going to make it appear above the target, 
And I also want to add something to make this a little bit more dynamic. So I'm going to create a rotate script on it so that once this is displayed on top of the image, we actually get it to come to life a little bit. So let me just open this up. Oh, it looks like it actually has the rotate from <laughs> when I was testing this out. Oh, well, it just had it when it was loading. Um, so to rotate this, we can actually just write one simple line that's transform.rotate, and then we tell it where we want it to rotate along. So let's just have it rotate along the up axis with up. Then we can multiply that by time that delta time. And let's give it a multiplier so that it doesn't rotate too slowly. So again, all this is doing is it's applying a slow rotation along the up axis. So now, once we detect this target, we should display this billiard ball, and it has a behavior on it so that it will rotate. I'm going to show that in the hollow lens, but first, I actually want to show you that there's a way that you can test this without using the hollow lens at all, and this is really useful uh, for testing. So if you want to test this without the hollow lens, just go to your Vuforia configuration, and instead of see-through config being hollow lens, select Vuforia. Now, when you hit play in Unity, if you have a webcam configured, you'll see your webcam view, and you can take the image that you've used, put it up to the screen, and you'll see that it starts displaying uh, whatever it should once it recognizes that image target. So we've actually completed the tutorial. Um, this is everything. But next, I just want to show you that this works with the HoloLens by showing you a video from that perspective. So now you can see I have a new desk decoration. It's a floating 8-ball, thanks to HoloLens and Vuforia. I hope you're now inspired to start decorating your desk or wherever you are with augmented reality HoloLens and Vuforia. If you missed how to deploy to the HoloLens using Unity from our last tutorial, uh, you can easily find the steps online in the Holograms 100 site on the Windows Dev Center. Just scroll to the part about building and deploying to a device from Visual Studio. So hopefully you like this tutorial. Um, definitely consider leaving us a subscription or dropping a comment if you want to see more on augmented reality. We love building this stuff, and hopefully you're as excited about AR as we are. We'll see you next time.